Welcome to Frequency Matters, the Art for Microwave Update series. I'm Pat Hindle, and I'm here with my co-host, Eric Heim. In this episode, we're going to cover our September automotive and connected vehicle-themed issue. The cover story is about an interesting method to measure vehicle antenna radiation patterns and data throughput. It's written by RAN LOS. It's a Swedish company, and it covers their unique approach to OTA measurements for vehicles. And it uses a cylindrical reflector fed by a linear array of dual polarized antennas. So it's a really interesting method. So you got to check that out. Eric, what do we have for other articles? Uh, thanks, Pat. Yeah, that, that RAN LOS article was an interesting one, a good one. Uh, we also had a good overview of the automotive semiconductor market from Strategy Analytics, uh, now part of Tech Insights. A big takeaway from their report is that they're forecasting the automotive semiconductor market will almost triple to $144 billion in 2023. Uh, so lots of semiconductor opportunities there. And the report does a great job of uh, segmenting the market and identifying the key trends and drivers uh, no pun intended. So give that one a read. Uh, we also had a good tutorial from Amatech Compliance Test Solutions in Switzerland in conjunction with Modelithics to walk us through the design of a 30 to 1000 megahertz 10 watt GAN hemp PA. So lots of models, circuit diagrams, uh, layouts, load line charts, and that one. And the article does a great job of uh, walking the reader through the design process. And so uh, for products, we cover an EM simulation platform from CEM Works and an SSPA for weather radar from Pulse Systems and an automotive qualified Ethernet devices from Microchip. And we did have a special guest join us today, Mark Murphy, Global Market Manager for RF and Microwave Energy at Mini Circuits. He talked with me about the RF energy market and some of the solutions that they're bringing to market for various applications. Let's take a look at a clip from that now. So when you last came on the show, um, Mini Circuits has just getting started into the RF energy market. How has the product line developed since then? Yeah, yeah. Since the last time we talked, uh, we've continued to invest uh, a load of uh, engineering resources into the team. And uh, 2023 for us was a real breakout year. So uh, if you look at uh, what we've been doing, say in the years before that, the two years before that, since we started the product line, we would probably released about uh, three products. This year, we're going to be doing more than 10 products. Uh, and so that's that's like that's big, big deal for us. Um, and then to give you an example of some of those products, uh, we have a new 2.45 gigahertz uh, 50 watt module. So it's 50 ohms in, 50 ohms out. Uh, it has an integrated uh, signal source and a, con a complete system controller. Uh, it comes to get together with a Windows based GUI and essentially a, a standalone system. So essentially, when the customer gets this, he just needs to connect it up to his applicator. Uh, are, are the end application and, and they're basically within minutes to, to be measuring real time data. So uh, we believe this is going to be disruptive. Uh, we see applications like low power plasmas being a key application and general heating uh, applications for flexibility and control are critical. So we're really excited about, about, the, about that product and that's going to be coming within the next month. Wow, the Mini Circus RF Energy Group has really grown, so I'm looking forward to wide adoption of those products. And turning to the news, the Global Mobile Supplier Association 4G, 5G Fixed Wireless Access Form released the findings of its annual Fixed Wireless Access Customer Premises Equipment Market Survey, and it revealed that shipments more than doubled in 2022 to $7.4 million, and they're forecast to increase again to $13.8 million during the current year. Uh, this figure represents more than 40% of all the shipments by the vendor's survey compared to 29% of the shipments in 2022. And the GSA also identified announced service offers for fixed wireless access using LTE or 5G from 535 operators in 186 countries and territories. So widely uh, expanding there, which is a good sign. And also ATIS Next G Alliance and Barat 6G Alliance announced that they've signed a Memorandum of Understanding to explore collaboration opportunities on 6G wireless technologies. And this work will encompass aligning the research and development priorities that are common that support a 6G vision that will create a secure and trusted telecommunications, as well as a resilient supply chain. Uh, Eric, what did you see in the news? 
Well, I saw that ID TechX just released a new industry report on uh, autonomous cars, robo taxis, and sensors, where they give some background on the cities that are being used as test beds and apparently some of the issues surrounding that. Uh, they're monitoring disengagement when a driver has to intervene in the process uh, and relating that to uh, collisions. And their conclusion is that we're still better off with humans behind the wheel, uh, but autonomous vehicle safety is improving exponentially. Uh, so at some point in the future, autonomous systems will be safer. Uh, we'll look forward to that. And uh, keeping with that theme, in a somewhat automotive-related area, I see that Inoki Wave just released a white paper on the SATCOM industry. And they quote a Boston Consulting Group study that forecasts the space market will exceed $1 trillion by 2040. Uh, and those applications are going to rely heavily on phased array. So that's the Inoki Wave interest. Yeah, and uh, turning to events, Eric and I are heading out to Berlin this weekend to the European Microwave Week show. It should be really well attended. The uh, exhibition is sold out, and I think registration is doing very well. And I look forward to kind of seeing some of the new satellite technologies that we're going to explore in the Defense, Security, and Space Forum on Wednesday, and also the automotive radar and sensor technology that Europe always seems to lead the way in. I'm also looking forward to seeing some of the startups and how they're doing. Companies like TMY Tech, Icana, Gallium Semiconductor, Altam RF, Millibox, and some of the others. So it's really a, a interesting area to see some of these startups coming into play now. Eric, how about you for events? Yeah, and uh, just a reminder, and it's really just around the corner, EDICon Online takes place every Wednesday in October, covering topics in RF, microwave, signal integrity, power integrity, and EMC, EMI. Uh, we've got great keynote talks this year, including Alex Lido, CEO of EPC, Eric Bogatin, technical editor of Signal Integrity Journal, and a professor at the University of Colorado, Chris Pearson, president of 5G Americas, and Asif Anwar, executive director, global automotive practice at Tech Insights. Registration is open, so please go to ediconline.com and sign up today. And that wraps up this episode. Our sponsor is Mini Circuits, a global leader in the design, manufacture, and distribution of RF and microwave components and integrated assemblies with more than 10,000 active models. Remember that as a member of the industry, a subscription to Microwave Journal is free, so please visit our site and subscribe today if you're not already a reader. And uh, thanks for watching, and join us next time for another Frequency Matters.